Okay, hi there. Welcome to another video looking at synoptic economics in preparation for students uh, taking synoptic exams in economics, bringing micro and macro together. Let's take another topic, if it's okay with you. Let's think about the micro and macro policies that might be effective in helping to reduce a country's trade deficit. Well, the context for me is the UK. Here's the trade balance in goods and services each year in the UK since 2008. And you can see that in each year, other than 2020, obviously an abnormal year uh, because of the pandemic, but in most years, the UK runs a structural trade deficit in goods and services overall. In fact, in 2022, the trade deficit in goods was huge, 230 billion, uh, partly offset by a very large surplus in services. The UK has a comparative advantage in things like business services, creative industries and so on, and financial services. The surplus there was 145 billion, but net trade X minus M was 85 billion deficit. And the forecast for 2023 is that that deficit will get bigger. So it begs the question, uh, what kind of policies might be effective in helping to lower, to bring down this significant trade imbalance? What about micro policies? Well, micro policies, of course, are those which focus on individual industries, businesses, the labour market and so on and so forth. One policy could be to uh, expand export subsidies, some sort of financial support for exporters. That could be, for example, input subsidies. You might uh, subsidise steel. You might subsidise the cost of fertilisers in farming, tax breaks, uh, and also, for example, uh, maybe cheaper, more affordable loans for things that like export finance. That's trade credit and trade insurance. Oftentimes, businesses, particularly smaller businesses, find it quite expensive to get the insurance and the credit in order to export into overseas markets. I'll give you an example here, an input subsidy to an e-vehicle battery manufacturer might encourage an inflow of foreign direct investment, which then over time drives higher exports. So maybe some subsidies to encourage investment into the UK at an industry level, at a micro level, which grows the capacity of that sector and then drives higher exports. Or for example, a farm subsidy might encourage domestic farm production, and help to reduce UK demand for imported food. Now, I'm not going to use diagrams in this video, but you might be able to envisage in your own mind a, a subsidy diagram affecting costs and revenues, or a subsidy diagram affecting supply and demand. Second uh, micro approach will be to focus on the labour market and invest in human capital of individual people, apprenticeships, enterprise education, STEM subjects, investment in those kind of areas designed to improve human capital, lift skills, and uh, increase labour productivity, which in turn can help you uh, lower unit labour costs, which will then help make industries that want to export a bit more competitive, as well as those firms facing in import competition. And critically, I think at a micro level, encouraging entrepreneurship can stimulate more business startups, whatever in fintech, in life sciences, who knows, creative industries. Uh, which might be possible exporters of the future. The UK, for example, has a comparative advantage in creative arts, film and television and video gaming and so on and so forth, online um, um, content. At a micro level, those are now major exporters. So if we get that right, you can improve your trade balance. Well, what about macro policies? Don't forget, synoptic is micro and macro aspects of the economics you've studied. Well, one policy might be uh, to try to engineer a fall in the external value of the exchange rate, the depreciation of the pound against the euro or the dollar. Now, keep in mind, of course, the UK has a free-floating exchange rate, so that would require a change of policy, perhaps moving to a managed floating exchange rate system where the Bank of England intervenes in the currency markets or perhaps uses interest rates to, uh, to nudge the exchange rate a little lower. In theory... This improves the price competitiveness of our export sectors. It also makes imports relatively more expensive, leading to expenditure switching effects and hopefully over time an improved, an improved trade balance. And on the fiscal side, the government might ramp up spending on infrastructure. Our trade competitiveness is widely regarded that the UK is lagging behind in terms of our infrastructure. Ports, telecoms, gaps and uh, problems with rail and road networks all of these things drive costs up. Um, so if you can get that right, if you can increase your infrastructure, improve it, that increases long and aggregate supply, lowers logistics costs of getting goods to market. Poor infrastructure acts as effectively like a tax on exporting. It is a, an extra cost. It's a barrier to trade 
both with the European Union, our closest trading neighbours, and also other countries. So there we go, exchange rates and fiscal policy to macro policies that might be employed. Now, I think in terms of evalu evaluation, it's important to distinguish between the cyclical and the structural causes of a trade deficit. So a macro policy to reduce the exchange rate should help to bring the trade deficit down, but it does depend on the Marshall Learner condition being achieved. And initially, of course, if the pound falls against the dollar and the euro, we might find that the trade balance worsens. That's the so-called Jacob effect. I'm sure you can show that. A weaker currency, of course, also at a macro level, increases the cost of, the, of all the imports we have to buy into the economy, uh, from energy and uh, components and what have you. And many exports require imports. So that although the pound might go down, uh, that may, might make your exports even less competitive because your import costs have gone up. My instinct is that micro policies are perhaps, perhaps, hedging word, more effective in the long run on the supply side in improving non-price competitiveness. So can, for example, a tax incentive for research and development in particular industries, can that stimulate innovation at the cutting edge? And it's always possible to address trade gaps at an industry level. For example, we mentioned farming, didn't we? But keep in mind also that these policies may not necessarily be effective or efficient or equitable. Uh, and so there's always the risk of government failure if governments are trying to target policy at uh, the trade balance in a particular industry. Either way, this is quite an interesting topic. We are running a we are running a big trade deficit, and you might be asked to think about the micro and macro policies or causes, if you like, uh, of a trade deficit and how to bring it down. Hopefully, you found this video useful. If you did, please, please press the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay curious. See you sometime soon.